You're by the way, King Ding Bang here, and we are one day away from the draft. And being one day away from the draft, I had to bring my guy on, my guy that we did another draft board this year, my man, Lord Brunson. What is up, buddy? How are you doing? What's going today? on? What's doing? going on? I'm doing good. Dingback Nation, how y'all doing? We one day away. As my guy just said, it's going to be a movie. I'm doing well. How are you doing? Five double O. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I just had a weird echo there for a second. Are you you hear me? Still? Oh, I was saying, I was saying, how you doing, Father Blue? How you doing? I'm, 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 I'm ready, good. Man. I'm good. I want to apologize for the for the uh, background. I'm still not settled in my house. Uh, I see we got a lot of people in here. Dave, just call me Flair, Romy, Jake, Tim, uh, JJ. Uh, I am Ruiz, Rock the Artist. What's up, my man? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. We're one day away from this draft, and LB. There's a lot of rumors flying right now. We've heard a lot of things. We heard Ertz is probably going to be gone. We're hearing yes. today that the Eagles love Jalen Waddell and that they could possibly even move up for him or Devontae Smith, which is a great thing. The other thing in Philly, especially on Philly radio, that people have been flipping out about is that the Eagles may draft Quiddy Pay. What, what are your <laughs> thoughts about what, all this crap going on, my man? Man, it's, it's, it's a whirlwind. This is what I expected one day away from the draft time. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. And especially with how easy our fan base is influenced, it, it makes sense for all these rumors to be swirling around. But Quiddy Pay, it's giving me pains in the chest. I'm, I'm scared of that one. Because that looks like – that. first I thought Christian Barmore scared me. Then you throw Quiddy Pay in there now. Now you're talking about two defensive linemen. I mean, gee, and, it, and this is the words that they use that really got me. The Philadelphia Eagles are in love with Quiddy Pay. I'm like, oh, God, here we go again. In I love. Mean, yeah. Uh -huh. And here's the thing, though. The reason why it's scary is because if you look at the Eagles, their history, especially with Howie, like around 12 to 15, it's Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Derek Barnett. That is what they typically like to go. And, and I was telling LB before we started – that you could bet right now what the Eagles yeah. are going to take. My brother, he's hoping that they draft Quiddy Pay because he just bet ninety dollars win a thousand dollars that the Eagles take a defensive line uh, player with the first pick. That's how much Eagle fans think that it is possible that they're going to take a defensive I, line. Listen, I, I really hope they don't because defensive line is not a position of need for us right now. I mean, we have so many things that we need to be able to do. We need to be able to score more points, and you right. can't do that with a defensive lineman. I right. mean, you still got Fletcher Cox. There's no rumors of Fletcher Cox leaving. I just don't understand what's this immediate need and love that we have for defensive linemen. I, I just, I just don't get it. A defensive I, lineman to me is a position where dudes couldn't afford to get old. You right. know what I mean? A little older than than like a running back or a wide receiver, and you can still get some value out of them, man. I just don't – I hate the rumor. I hope it's not true, man. Yeah. I mean, look, if there was a defense alignment worth taking, I would be okay with it. But if you do a board, if you do a draft board, and you put the, your top 12 to 15 players – there yeah. is not a defense alignment in that. In that there's board. not. There's not. There's not. I think and, you really – I'm no, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I think was going to say – no, oh. I was just going to say that – that this isn't a team that's winning Super Bowl next year. You don't exactly. have the luxury to pick a spot on a roster. You have a hole. You need to pick the best available player. Exactly. It, it, it goes back to what I was saying about the Washington football team when they selected uh, Chase Young. Right. Uh, they had a pretty good defensive line already. So what they did was they basically – uh, when they picked Chase Young, he was deemed as a generational talent. So they couldn't really pass on him. We're not in that position. We could pass on these dudes. Right. We could pass right. on them. Yeah, I so. agree. Yeah, the day, man. Thank you for the super chat, man. He says, much love from a Giants fan, but I hope you guys take Quiddy. I appreciate oh the super <laughs> chat, but I'm telling you, I need the Giants to bail me out of the Quiddy Pay thing. The, the Quiddy yeah. Pay thing scares me, LB. And I've been talking about it for about a month. I've been saying on purpose every video, I have no problem taking the best player available, but it's not Quiddy Pay. Like I've I've had this feeling when they traded back to 12, they were looking defensive line. So I, I'm really kind of nervous about this pick, man. I mean, I'm scared. I, oh, it's just you, you just never know. That's the thing about it. You never know. And and what's really scary to me about this year's draft or coming up tomorrow is that there are so many players that want to be available at 12. 
and Quiddy Pay would be the absolute reach. It would be a reach. Think about it like this. If you take Quiddy Pay at 12, then you absolutely overlook J.O.K. because he's going to be there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You overlook so many guys at 12. You right. overlook the guys that's going to slip down because some trades are going to happen. You know what I mean? You just overlook so much. There's already a bit of a, a of a downslide or a slippage that I see already with um, Teddy Bridgewater going to Denver. That happened today. Right. So with Teddy Bridgewater going to Denver, is Denver still in the quarterback sweepstakes? Probably not. So somebody yeah. else will slip down. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. Just, it's, it's just ridiculous. It, it is. It is. It's if, ridiculous. You want Quiddy, if you want Quiddy Pay, trade back to like the 20s and get an extra yeah. pick. Something like that. Demarion Hicks says, Philly, the Dolphins prefer Waddle over Chase. That would be great news for me. Because That would be great news for me. I mean, I mean, look, and we'll talk about it, but I think – see, I think – Chase or Pitts will be there at seven. I believe one of them will because I think you're going to get four quarterbacks go off the board. I think Atlanta either takes a quarterback or they're going to trade their pick for somebody that comes up and gets a quarterback. Mm -hmm. That means at five, what are the what are the Bengals? I, I have a hard time believing Bengals go receiver. I mean, you just had Burrow torn ACL. You need to protect your quarterback. They're going to go Penny Sewell or Slater. That's what I think. That means Dolphins are going to take either Chase or or Pitts, most likely. That means one of those guys falls to seven. If you fall seven, Eagles can trade up and get one, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you, and, you know, while we're on the topic of trading up, I think the Philadelphia Eagles absolutely have to trade back up to a higher draft pick. You have to. You have to use that pick that you just got from the Dolphins. you you got to make something happen. If there's a guy out there that you believe is the guy and it can make your football team better next year, this is the year to go up there and get him because you got all this draft capital. I don't yeah. see that. I, I just don't understand why we would just sit at 12 anyway. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't, don't get it. I don't yeah. get it. Moving don't from either. 6 to 12 was golden because you got that first round pick, which now you can use to get back up to as high as four, I believe. Yeah, you could. I mean, you get up to four, but if you, if you could get in that like seven, I think eight to nine range, you're probably not going to have to give up a first round pick to do it, which means that you've gone two spots back and got an extra first round pick in the future. Yeah. So I would be okay with that. Philly was it? And Forch, Forch, Forch. I don't know if I'm saying your name wrong, but I appreciate the super chat. He says Philly back to six, giving more than they got for it. Um, no, you don't have to go to six. Go to go to seven. Go to eight. You know. But I, I appreciate I appreciate the super chat. Yeah, if, if you if you, if you go back to six, it's going to cost you no less than a first round pick because the Dolphins are not going to play themselves and you you know just dissolve everything they've done. They're going to want that first round pick back because the Dolphins at six, right? Yeah, Dolphins are picking at six and they're trying to trade it. Uh, there's rumors that they're yeah. actually trying to move it, which means they're going to want more than what they they gave up for it. Um, if you know if I'm the Eagles, I'm not going back to six, but like like around eight. I mean, I figure around eight, you're not going to have to give a first round pick. To get up that high, so why not? You have two thirds. Trade Zach Ertz. Trade trade your twelfth pick, a third round pick, Zach Ertz, and maybe you can get up to eight or nine. I don't see why you can't. You know? Yeah, I I, I think they should be more aggressive. I'm trading the first and Zach Ertz to get up to four. If, if, you if, go if over it, four. I want to go to four because I want to All get right. the guy that I want to get the guy who I believe we need to be really targeting in this first round. I want to get yeah. that guy. Yeah. Oh, who and who? Who do you want? Your number one guy you would want. Just, my number one guy right now is Devontae Smith. Devontae That's Smith. my number one guy, absolutely without a question in my mind. First of all, he wants to play with Jalen Hurts. He I think he gets eight hundred receiving yards as a rookie if you bring him in here. I think yeah. he he I think he sets the standard for Philadelphia wide receivers for the next ten years. He he wants to play with our quarterback. Yeah. How many times have you heard that? Not <laughs> you know. Me. He wants no, to play me. with them. I, th I think you go up there and you make it happen. And size is not a matter. Size is not a factor. It, it doesn't matter. That's a football player, a Heisman winner. We're not going. We're going. We got to stop talking about his size and how much he weighs and talk about how much he brings to the table. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. If, if that if that dude says he wants to go out there and go to war with Jalen Hurts, you trade Zach and that first round pick you just got, and you go get your cornerstone player at the wide receiver position. I like it. I love Devontae Smith. One of my top four guys. I mean, I think I like him better than Waddle. I think he would fit us better than Waddle. So I'm with you. Reaper Town says, Philly 500, Lord Brunson, the greatest Eagles YouTubers of all time. I appreciate Thank that. Thank, Thank you, Reaper. Buddy. Thank you. And, 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 I, and we agree. 
We agree. <laughs> One goes. Thank you for super chat. Finally, I make it to a live stream. Sheesh, work has me damn busy. Salute to the goats. Salute to you, man. Hey, thank salute you. to you. Salute to thank you. Thank you for getting here, man. Leo Edward, thank you for the super chat. He says, "What up, LB in Philly? Rank Smith, Waddle, Sir Cannon, Horn." I'll, I'll, all right, rank. I'll let you Let's go do first. It. You let me go first. Okay, yeah. Smith, Smith, Waddle, Sir Cannon, Horn. So I'm gonna go from I'm gonna go from uh, from best to to worst. But they're all great, so nobody's really worse. Nobody's really you know the worst guy in this situation. Ah oh, man. So obviously, Devontae Smith is, is is my number one guy right there. That's my number one guy right there. After Smith, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Horn. I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm going to go Sertain. I believe Sertain has what I like to call controlled aggression. He's big, he, he's physical, but it's controlled. And the, that's the only difference between Sertain and Horn to me, that, that Sertain can control the aggression more, which at the next level should result into less pass interference calls. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go Horn, and then I'm going to go Waddle. I like Waddle. I just don't think I, I don't think he's trash because he's last out of this great group of guys, yeah. but Waddle will be the last guy for me. Interesting. Okay, so to so me, I, you have a little different. I have, I have Smith one. Mm -hmm. I will have Waddle two. Mm. Um, I like Waddle a lot. I, I just think that Smith's a better fit for us. But if we're just going on my like big board, I would have Waddle two. I have Horn three and four Sertan. I'm mm. a big Horn guy. Uh, my only fear with Sertan is I'm afraid that he's going to have a hard time with speed receivers. To me, is like I, 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 he's big, right? He's big yeah. and physical. Um, Horn to me seems he's like he's a little more blend of big and fast. That's why I like him. But I tell you what, Sertan could be I could totally be wrong about him. If yeah, the Eagles yeah, they're both good, yeah. If they drafted any of those guys, you are not gonna hear me complain yeah. at all. I'm happy you know with either I mean? four. I agree. I agree. You know, definitely. Joseph Vega, yo, Philly 500. What's good? Hey, LB. What's going on, What's Joseph? What's going Vega? on, Joseph? I have to say, when Joseph Vega comes in, if, if I miss him, he lets me have it. You didn't see me. You're ignoring me. What the hell's going on? That's what. That, hey, that's what he do. That's what he does. He does. So I have to make sure that, that we know he's here. He's in the house now. What? <laughs> Howie Roseman, right? Howie yeah. Roseman scares the hell out of me. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I, I was listening to that press conference. And I was listening to him talk about m his misses in the past. It seems like he doesn't even acknowledge his mistakes. Like, do you think this guy is going to have complete control? Or, or do you think that Sirianni will have some sort of influence on this guy? Because that's my hope. So, you know? so as far as Howie Roseman not acknowledging his mistakes, he, just, he don't think he's wrong. He, he think he, I, think he, I don't think he's made a mistake. So therefore, he's always going to have a problem acknowledging. I, I think that he feels like he made – he can just – Howie Roseman will be able to pull an answer out of his hat. And when I mean hat, I mean the one that he sits on. He'll be able to pull an answer out of that hat, you know what I mean, for every pick he made. And we all know some of those picks are bogus. You can't justify – Jay, you can't even justify Jalen Rager. You can't justify that pick no. and pass it on Justin Jefferson. But Howie Roseman will find a way to do it. Now, um, what was the second part of your question? Do you think Nick Sirianni will have oh, okay. some sort of influence on him? I think I think it's more the fans. I don't think it's Sirianni. No. I think it's the pressure and the mm. things that Howie Roseman could be reading. Because we did hear a report recently that said Howie Roseman was just a madman and would just ignore everything. Right. I think yeah. he has to approach it different, especially with these, you know, these new coaches who are probably going to do the adult thing and give them the benefit of the doubt because they right. never work with them. So he's yeah, not going to yeah. come off. He, 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 the last thing he wants is these guys to say, oh, the reports were right about this guy. He has yeah. to prove that stigma wrong. And I think this is the year he does it. And you kind of see a little bit of it, though, 500, when you think about it. Eric, um, Eric Wilson, the linebacker, that was the pick from our, our linebacker coaches and our defensive coordinator. They got yeah. ties to that guy. Anthony yeah. Harris, he has ties to our defensive coordinator. So yeah. these, these free agent signings aren't of a Howie Roseman thing. This is how we rose been listening to the training staff and listening to our coaches saying, listen, I know mm -hmm. this guy personally. I work with this guy. Let's bring him in. So I think you're going to get a different you, – you, I think we're going to be surprised tomorrow. I'm praying for it. Yeah. I, 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 I think you're right, though. I think the pressure is on Howie Roseman. He can't blame anybody else. I mean, he, he could put things on Doug. Doug didn't develop young guys. You can't justify the umbrella man. You no. cannot justify him over DK Metcalf, and, and, and you just can't do it. Uh, but I look at Nick Sirianni, dude. When I hear him, just like a a a just a 
my overall impression, my gut instincts of him is he's a salesman. Like this guy could sell you, he could sell a fat kid a carrot and tell him it's a Twix bar and the kid's going <laughs> to believe it. Like that's how I see him. I, I, you ever see the movie Inception? Yeah. With, with, that's what with I Leo, think. With Leo. I, yeah. With Leo. I think Nick Sirianni is smart enough to know that you can't go at Howie and say, "We, I want this, I want this. You have to make Howie Roseman think that he thought of the idea. And I agree. I, think, I agree. I think Sirianni is going to have a bigger influence just because of his personality, the way I, I – like the, my instinct for the way he is. I think he is going to have an influence, and we're going to have a pretty good draft. That's what I think. You know what I mean? But we'll see. EDP D four four five. Thank you for the super chat. He says, "Who do you guys <laughs> want in the second and third rounds? Any anybody specifically?" I you? like Eric Stokes. If if we go wide receiver first, I like Eric Stokes, the cornerback from Georgia. I like okay. Stokes in the second yep. round. Third round, it's hard to say who will even be there, but I know some guys will slip in the third round. I'm, assu I'm assuming by the first and the second round how I would like us to draft that we would have our wide receiver and we would have our cornerback. Third round, I'm right. looking at linebackers. Who's the best available right. linebacker available in the third round at that point? I yeah. think Zayvon Collins will be gone. I think it would be a stretch to think we get Zayvon Collins at seven, 70. Um, uh, what's the guy named from LSU? Uh, what's his name? Jabril? Jabril, uh, Jabril Cox. Cox. Okay, that's a good guy for my third round. What about yeah, you? I, my my second round. This is going to sound crazy, but my second round. I want. I don't want a second round pick because I want to trade back up into the first round, and I want to. I want to get JOK. I want to use one of those first round picks to get to get JOK. But if let's say we go, it really depends. Like let's say at twelve we take a cornerback. If we take a cornerback, then I want to come back in. I want that kid from LSU. He slipped in my mind, the receiver. Uh, uh, okay, there is Tony. No, no. no the, he's the Florida. Kid, he's Florida. Uh, the kid from LSU that played on uh, – I, why I can't think of his Ter name? Ter right Terrace now. Marshall Jr.? Ter yes, I want him. If he's I go corner, if I go Horner, Sir Dan at 12, I want him. I want to trade up for him. He's a beast. He, yeah. he averaged, up, I think, 100 yards receiving a yeah. game. Then, he's a then problem. It, He's a he's gonna be a like look, dude. I think here's my here's my top receivers, right? First is Chase, second is Devontae Smith, third is Waddle. Uh, this kid, uh Marshall Jr. is my fourth. I fourth? like him better. Yeah, I like him that much. I think he's a I think he's a stud. Even you know? then you like him better than Bateman? Yeah. I like him better than Bateman and Kadarius Tony. I do. Uh, and I like Bateman. I think Bateman's a tough. Tough wide receiver. I think he's good, but I think this kid is explosive, dude. I I, I really I like him. him. And he has the size too, Terrence Marshall. Yeah. He's about yeah. six four, I think, right? Yeah, I like him. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I like, I, I'm not mad at any one of those guys being our wide receiver pick. I'm not mad yeah. at it. I'm not mad yeah. at it. Yeah, no, me either. Zach Lambert, thank you for the super chat, buddy. Let's get to a couple of these super chats coming in. Klein Gemberkind, thank you for the super chat. He says, "Hello, guys. Hello from Glasgow, Scotland." Hey, old Glasgow. Scottish. How are you doing? Yes, sir. Up, yes, buddy? sir. How are you? I only been watching football for one year. You dudes are awesome. Love you both and keep up the good work. Oh man, hey, thank, thank you, you so buddy. much. Thank you, thank you, man. I appreciate that. All the way from Scotland. How about that? You ever been to Scotland? No, I haven't been to Scotland. But interesting fact, I actually did acquire a plot of land over there, and I am officially a lord. Oh yeah. You yeah, are a lord. I wanted, you yeah, a I, I wanted to be a lord. You, you need know? to wear one of your Scottish things. One of the kilts? Things. Yeah, get it on. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe I should get me one. You should get one of those, and I want to get the um, J Jason Kelsey uh, Mummer's Day Parade outfit before I shave because everybody says I look like Jason Oh, Kelsey. yeah. <laughs> so, you know. You get the Mummer's Day Parade outfit, I'll definitely get the kilt. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. John Keel, thanks for Super Chat. One of the top receivers or corners, I'll be happy. I can see how he's saying, I just got five receivers last year and skipping over a stud. John Gill, I, I could see it too, and I hope not. I hope the Eagles just go best player available. That's all I want. Just take the best guy, you know? Yeah. That, that, that's what well, I want. Well, well see, I, I struggle with best player available. I think of it like this, 500. I want the best guy at the best at the at the position of need. Cuz you can go best player available and you could end up with a right tackle. He could be the best person on the board. You could totally bypass the wide receiver position. You right. know, I want the best player available at the position of need. 
That, we need mm. what well, we need a cornerback. We need a wide right. receiver. We need a, the yeah. best player available out of that crop. And right. it's so deep at cornerback yeah. and wide receiver. I don't think we're gonna miss that cornerback or wide receiver. We might not like when we pick them, but I don't think we're gonna miss. If, we if, they, like if with, it, yeah, no, I, I no, I hear what you're saying. I to me, I guess the way I look at it is this team is a few years away from re, from really competing as, as far as if they do it right, I think in two years they can compete again. Yeah. So I'm like you don't have – don't worry about where the player's coming from. We just need to accumulate talent. Yeah. I, I, I We need talent on this team. We need top-end talent. You know what I mean? We need top-end talent. Not guys that are just okay. We need franchise builders. You we know? need some guys that's going to sell jerseys. I think that's, yeah. a, that's an easy way to look at it. Are people no. going to buy his jersey? Is he going to perform right. well enough to sell jerseys? Yeah. Let's get back to the basics, man. We've been yeah. overlooking talent for years now. You can't justify Ortega Whiteside. No. You can't no. do it. It's impossible. You cannot do it. Yeah, and I mean, I, Jesus and Christ. I, I, I just, you know, and, and I don't buy any of the things that the Eagles said. Well, DK was, we were worried about his injuries. I don't believe any of it. They just flat out missed because they, they always do the analytics stuff, you know? Trans but, 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 man, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I, I, I was saying, you know, I, I kind of grew to get to get a little softer on about missing on Justin and DK. And DK. I think it's the monkey see, monkey do thing. I think that everybody passed on them, so they, decided, so they thought that it was something that they didn't hear, so they should pass on them too. That's mm. what I think, because it's, it's just no justification for that many teams, period, to pass on those guys. Right. Well, I, here's my problem with the, the whole – let me get to the Super Chat, and then I'll, I'll tell you this. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Man, I think Marshall will end up being better than one of the top three wide receivers. Trans, thank you for the Super Chat. See, he likes he likes them too, no doubt about it. Yeah. No question about it. I, I like Marshall. But here, my here's guy, my thing. Time. What is it? I'm sorry. Oh, somebody time? in the chat. Yeah, oh. Grand Town. Oh, well, let me find him. There you go. Grind time. What's up? So here's my thought with the DK thing. Like, there, to me, there's no excuse because you were using your second, second round pick. It wasn't the first round pick. It wasn't your first, second round pick. It was your second, second <laughs> round pick. If there's ever a chance you take a shot on a top 10 guy, that was it. That was it. Yeah. You know okay. I mean? Yeah. 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 When, when you when you put it that way, it hurts that much. And <laughs> you know what really hurts me about this one, the DK thing, five hundred. If you look back, I was screaming it all off season. I know. The guy is a stud, and then this is what this is the time where I wasn't even watching college football. I mean, if if, if I can eyeball test and just look at the measurables and how the dude was performing at the at the combine, you right. got to pick a dude like that. He was running like the Terminator. Right. It was it was ridiculous. Right. <laughs> like yeah. I'm like, and you pass on that? I don't get it, man. Yeah, it's crazy. We got 651 people in the chat. Make Shout sure out to you all. please like, please subscribe, click the link in the description. Go sub up my man LB. He will be streaming live as well tomorrow. So yes, make sure yes. you check him out. You go there. I think he's got some prizes and other things going on. So yep, make sure yep. you, you go over there, you tell him what's up, and uh flip between me and him and, and, and come tell me what's going on with him. That's all you got to do is bounce back and forth. That's it. That's it. Let's see here. We got some super chats coming in. I can't keep up with these. Man, you guys cool, are all awesome. e cool, e cool. Eagle got an interesting one right there. He Cool Eagle was in my stream earlier. <laughs> Jason Kelsey's here. Thank you for super chat. Look at that. He The guy found a picture of me on the internet with long hair. I, I don't <laughs> know. I don't know. <laughs> it's great. Jay Marcus, thank you, buddy, for super chat. He says, Dallas will always and forever stink. You ain't forever. kidding. Forever. Forever. They, forever. They, they're going to blow this draft. I can't wait. And they're all expecting us to, to have it. You know, Mark Holmes is waiting for me to have another meltdown. It's all he yeah. keeps talking about. You know, it ain't happening. Tomorrow will be a good day. Alex Epstein, thank you for super chat, man. I appreciate it. He says, am I the only one who hopes how he screws up this draft so we get a new GM next year? I don't trust him with our three first round picks next year. Now, that's an interesting point because if it Howie is. does screw up, you know, I, I do wonder if if it will. Uh, if it I think will affect him. I, th I think he can make us mad, and I, and I think he can make some picks that could pan out. The right. only way right. Howie Roseman can truly screw my opinion is if he drafts a quarterback with the twelfth pick in his draft. That's the only I, way he can truly, truly screw up. I think corner defensive lineman, and we got a problem. <laughs> I think this whole house is coming down. If, if even, it, even, even cornerback, 
Even corner? No, not corner. Just defensive oh. lineman yeah. or quarterback. Corner, oh, quarterback. On, okay. oh, yeah, quarterback. I, I, I think this idea of drafting a, cor- a quarterback and not giving Jalen Hurts the opportunity is stupid. I, I do. Uh, I, you know, I, I just don't like it. I, I think you got to give him a year, you know. I want to give him a chance, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Cool Eagle, thank you for the super chat, man. He says, Zach Wilson and or Mac Jones equals the biggest bust in this draft. Eagles pick defense. Parsons or Collins at 12. Love you guys. If the Eagles took Parsons, I, I mean, I would lo- I would love that. Would you? I would have no problem with Michael, Parsons. Michael Parsons? Yeah. I would have no problem with Parsons at all. Well, I was you know? all in. I was all in on Parsons for a while. And, he, and you, you actually, you know, you talked me out of that one, man. You were telling me I got to look at JOK. <laughs> That's I, my I, guy. I, 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 didn't, I didn't even, I didn't even want to, I didn't even want to look at him. When you said me, I was like, I am not looking at this. I'm going to give it a week because the stuff I'm seeing from Parsons, I don't know what 500 talking about. Then I looked at the link you said, and I'm like, okay, okay. I got some stuff to think about. And JOK turned out to be the number one linebacker in the draft for me. So yeah. if, if, if you take Parkins, if you take Parsons over JOK, I would probably have a problem with that at this point. Hmm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying because yeah. I, I do. I think JOK is the best linebacker in this draft too. Um, I, I think he's. I think he's the kind of guy you build your defense around. You know, that's how I see him. Uh, I w- I would love JOK, and and then to hear him what he said about Philly and how much you know he thought he fit it. It just yeah, it just made me love the guy even more. You know, uh, Parsons. I worry about. The, the, his pass coverage. And the other thing with Parsons is I, you know, I keep hearing there's a lot of off the field things and I don't yeah. want to deal with any of that. Yeah. I don't want to do, I don't want to deal with it, he, with it either, but I, I learned that sometimes you got to give guys that age, you know, you, you got to give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. You know, he might've made some mistakes. We all did. We all made some yeah, mistakes at those ages. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like sometimes you got to give them the benefit of the doubt. So any off the field issues, as long as, long as you wasn't questioned for nothing crazy, you know what I'm saying? I, you, you know, I kind of give you the benefit of the doubt. You can screw yeah. up your own life if you want. Once you get to the NFL, that would just be a crying shame. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Alex Epstein, thank you for super chat, man. He says, funny how there's people in the chat that still think Howie is a good GM after what he did with Wentz. I, I'm not a fan of Howie Roseman. I I, I fully admit that. Um, yeah. I, I, I was. I, no. I, I was. Just, where, yeah, I, I, I hated him. Then he won me over with the Super Bowl. And then it seemed like he went back to his old ways. Yeah. You know, I, I just I don't trust him. My trust is that maybe people influencing him will have bigger effect. I mean, this is a guy that they, they say basically he ignored he ignored his own scouts last year. They said Jefferson over Rager. He said no. They said Jeremy Chin in a second. He said no. You can't, you can't, you can't overrule your scouts like that. That's just how can crazy. you but how can you really what, what's the thought process? I I I'm, I really want to know what's the thought process for Rager over Justin Jefferson? What well, is I mean, the thought process there? I I mean, look, I fully was worried about Jefferson. I I when because I had read all this stuff that he can only be a slot wide receiver. He's only a slot wide receiver. It turned out to not be true. Yeah, and 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 it's wrong. Um, you know, I don't. I tell people all the time. I don't get paid to make decisions for the Eagles. I could be wrong. I'm just giving <laughs> you my opinion. Yeah, yeah. They can't be wrong. You know, it's different. Darius Crawford, man, thank you for the super chat, buddy. I appreciate it. But I, I you know, how we. I don't know how he's crazy. You know what I mean? He's crazy. Joe Vegas. Joe Vegas. I know this guy well. Joe Vegas is actually my father. For those that don't know, <laughs> really, well, my father's throwing us. Yeah, Joe Vegas. <laughs> he's in Vegas now, so we call him Joe Vegas. So, so shout out to him. Sorry, five hundred Eagles go D line. Hope they trade back. See, he thinks they're going D. Him and my brother, they're pro- they're betting defensive line uh, because it was like f- plus fourteen hundred. Which is a good bet. It's a good bet. It's a it, it's a good bet. But if, if it's if it's any a time if if it's a time I hope guys lose money, it's on that bet. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. See, here's here's it is. Cowboy fans always say, "I don't want Jefferson. He's ass." That's a quote I said during the CD Lamb draft pick last. Listen, listen. The only reason I said that was because I, I was pissed off the Cowboys got CD Lamb. Exactly. You know? It's crazy though, Nikki Emmons. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Do you think an additional game will affect the rosters? It's a great question. I mean, I think it has that to. That is affect a great question. It. I think it has to affect it on some level, right? Um, because 
I mean, one extra game can mean a whole lot. I mean, it, it really depends. Are teams going to be clinched after that fine, that last week? You know, like the one thing with the additional games, LB, is you're playing – you're not really playing like a division rival that last week. It seems yeah. like you're playing – like we're playing the Jets, somebody like that. So I, I wonder like if the playoff teams will even play players that game, you know? I doubt I it. No I, I, I doubt it because we don't do that now. But there yeah. will be some competitive games because this is the NFL, and a lot rides sometimes on that last game of the season to go to the yeah. playoffs or not go to the playoffs. Like, for instance, look at what happened in the NFC East. Didn't it come down to the last week last year? Yeah. But it was against yeah. division division opponents, though, so that was right. kind of different. But Yeah, yeah. Giants are still pissed about the end of last year, which is great. Who cares? I, I love it. I'm, I'm glad. Let them cry. Uh, Nikki, thanks for the Super Chat. Philly Talk Podcast, thank you for Super Chat, my man. He says, Mike, we need this energy from our draft team. You better believe it. They, yes. We're going to need a whole lot. You know what I mean? No question. Thank you for the super chat. Man of God, my man, what's up with you? He says, Howie has no choice but to keep his ego in check because it's the last year of his contract. That's that is point. the hope. You, That's you, think it, it, you, you think that he's really like, uh, you think he's that close to being done? By, he, by how, he, by he has to earn it because th th that's an amazing point because he no longer he doesn't have to stay. We could just we could just make it as easy as possible to part ways with him at this point. We just decided yeah. not to renew his contract. Yeah. Easier than being fired. So he got to actually go out there and earn an extension with the Philadelphia Eagles. He has to I, earn it. I feel like he can't do no wrong because he's got some compromising photos. He's got some crazy photos of, of got Jeffrey something. Lurie. Or I don't know how this guy has survived Andy Reid, Chip Kelly, now how he, now uh, Doug Peterson, and now he's on the Nick Sirianni. To me, it's absolutely crazy, you know? Cam, Cam, Cam. I've been a subscriber since 2K. Please acknowledge me. I, I comment 20 times a video and never get acknowledged. Can I get a wrench? I love your videos. I'm sorry if I missed your comments. Um Sometimes it's pretty hard to catch everything. We got 637 people in here right now, um, but I appreciate the support. And let me see you in the, in the streams, um, you know, I, and when I start wrenching people up again, uh, you'll be on my short list. But thank you. I, I do appreciate it uh, immensely. It means a lot. I got Definitely. a question for you, Fionn. Yeah. Who is your biggest, your big, who do you think has the biggest bust potential? Everybody's saying he's a star, but you, something about him just makes you think that he's going to be a bust in this draft. Mine might like, shock you. Jalen Waddle. You think Jalen Waddle has the biggest bust potential? I, I think Jalen Waddle has the biggest bust potential. I, I think, <laughs> I think Jalen Waddle is, is either going to be a star or he's going to be a bust. I don't think there's in between for him. I don't think he's going to be just a very good player. I think he's one or the other. I really do. Do you I, think? Do, do you think it's going to be due to injury or potential, or or just not? Yeah, being able I, I to just, rest the game. I just think I just think it's going to be due to injuries and just never get going. Now, I, now saying that, I still have him ranked my third receiver, but he's the one guy that I could see just not panning out. If you just go on gut instinct, I would say him. But okay, you know, I think so there's my, no no in between with him. I'm sorry, I know a lot of people are gonna say I'm crazy. Mine is Kyle Pitts, man. Really? <laughs> yeah, Kyle mine is Pitts. Kyle Pitts. <laughs> oh, that would be my last one. <laughs> mine is Kyle Pitts. Really? And and, and, that, and, that, and that's part of the reason why I have never seen a guy get this hyped up. I've never seen nobody talk about a guy like this, and he turns out to be everything. They're talking yeah. about this guy the same way. Now I've seen it one time, and this was in the NBA. It's, it's probably easier to do it on that level. But the way they talked about LeBron James is the yeah. same way they talked about Andrew Wiggins. Right. Only one of them turned out to be LeBron James. Right. You know what I mean? They're talking right. about Kyle Pitts. Like Kyle Pitts is absolutely from. So so one question I asked a lot of people was, you know, if you if, if you were a, a tight end away from a Super Bowl right now, you had all the pieces in place. Would you rather trade for Zach Ertz or trade up and, and, and grab Kyle Pitts? A lot of people think that Kyle Pitts is already better than Zach Ertz. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going to be let down. Right. A lot of people – people don't understand that a rookie tight end getting 500 yards in one season in his rookie year is pretty standard. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going to be hurt when he turns in that 450-yard season, that 550-yard season, because they're expecting this dude to get 1,000 yards receiving. It's not going to happen this first year. I just don't yeah. see it. I don't yeah. see it. 
Well, I, I will say this. I mean, he's been hyped to, to clear to kingdom come. I mean, he yeah. has been really hyped. Uh, and, and I'm probably the biggest hyper of him because I, I think he's an absolute monster. Um, I think I think he's, he would be my last guy. But I get why you're saying it, though. I, I get the logic in it. Um, well, no. Well, well, from a technical standpoint, though, another part of the reasoning is that I watched the pro day. I just wasn't impressed at all. Mm -hmm. I just I, mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't see him run hard. I didn't see him really try to put his athleticism on display. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it. And I look at guys like Elijah Moore. I look at Jamar Chase. I look at I look at a lot of other guys pro day. They just went out there and looked like how you're supposed to look mm -hmm. for the hype that you're getting. I didn't see it. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of these 40 times are a little exaggerated as well, his being one of them. But mm -hmm. I hope he proves me wrong. You know, he's a Philadelphia native. So you know how what I'm saying? So how you gonna, how you going to feel if they draft him, if we trade up and got him? <laughs> If I, I hope the I hope the hype pans out, at least yeah. we traded up for somebody that was hyped. This least, year. Yeah, at least right. you know what I'm saying. At right. least we didn't just pick. It, it wouldn't be a reach, right? Because everybody's right. hyping him. So I'll, yeah. I'll be okay. I'll be okay with it. No, I, I get it. I mean, when a guy gets that much love and hype, yeah. it, it does. You know, it, it does. It, it can backfire. No question about it. Isaiah Burns, thank you for a super chat. He says cornerbacks with the first two picks, Patrick and Samuels Jr. That. I mean, I, I wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, I would have no problem with that at all. That would you know be, what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Darius Crawford, thank you for the super chat. I think the only reason we traded out of six is because the Dolphins confirmed they weren't going to take Pitts or Chase. Also confirming one would fall to seven. Well, I mean, I don't know that they would confirm it, but I do think one of them is going to fall to seven. I do believe that. You know, yeah, but yeah, but that doesn't really help us because because you know without a shadow of a doubt, if we stay directly behind the Dallas Cowboys, we're asking to get screwed. We're right. asking for it. That's so. true. That's true. But thank you for the super chat. Uh, appreciate it. I mean, the Cowboys. You know, I I hate that team. Such such. I hate that team. Jay Marquis, thank you so much for the super chat. How do you feel about the number changes? So you heard that they changed the rules with the numbers yeah, now. Yeah, for, yeah. How do you feel about that? Thank you for the super chat, by the way. It's, 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 it's going to be weird to see, like, a defensive lineman be, like, number nine or something like that. It's going to be kind of weird, but uh, we'll get used to it. You know, it's just uh, – who cares? Right. I don't buy a lot of jerseys anyway because this is the Philadelphia Eagles we're talking about. The jerseys yeah. that I buy are, are players who are retired and can never possibly have their number changed. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm in the throwback kick. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, like, I'm not buying anything – Unless it's a throwback. Now, now, if they draft Kyle Pitts or JOK, I'm buying a jersey. That's it. Like, that's instant. Yeah. No doubt about it. RJ7, thank you for super chat, man. He says, Cousin Will Park says, Lori is too involved. Love the mashup of you guys. So so he's saying, I think he's saying his cousin, his, his cousin with Will Parks. And uh, Will Parks says, Jeffrey Lori is too involved. What do you think about that? I think he's probably right. <laughs> If his cousin told him that, it would definitely be true. But it don't seem like that on the outside looking in, though. It seems like Lori needs to be more involved. He needs to, like, tell guys, like, listen, I want him. He needs to sometimes be a little more like Jerry Jones because he's letting Howie Roseman do way too much from the way it looks for us. Mm -hmm. But yeah, shout well, out to your cousin, man. I wish we did keep uh, Will Parks, though, man. They didn't even give Will Parks a chance. It was no. it was the stupidest thing. I mean, I think Will Parks is, is pretty decent, too. It, it, was, it was just... That we got horrible. our karma with that though, because as soon as we let him go, Roddy McLeod get hurt. Now we need yeah, to see. Yeah, exactly. I know. And Will Parks could have played all over the place. Eagle Slayer, my man. He says this boy Howie getting an old fashioned beatdown if he f's up this. I'm telling you, uh, <laughs> he's going to get all the blame this year. No question about it. I I, I totally agree with you there, uh, because I think I think Howie is uh, I think he's out of out of excuses. With, yeah, it's, know, it's nobody to point the blame at. Nobody. I mean, they, they fired Doug Peterson, right? Doug Peterson won us a Super Bowl. Then he went to the playoffs, what, three straight years or two, yeah. two more? And then they fired him the one year he didn't. I mean, and he, I, you know. he was also going into the last year of his deal. Right. So, you know, they could have mm -hmm. let him ride that out. Yeah. Blade Brown, thank you for the super chat, super sticker. Appreciate it. And I love the Mr. T on the, on the thumbnail. Mr. T is one of my favorites. Uh, of all time, and let me tell you, I'm like Mr. T. You gotta, you gotta knock me out to get me on a plane because I ain't getting on a plane any other way. Alex Epstein, thank you so much for super chat. He says, "LB, you on that Mark Holmes keto diet, thinking Pitts is going to be a bust." I just, I, I just, I, I just got a feeling, man. I, I hope I'm wrong, man. I, I just, I just got a feeling, man. I, I mean, 
I, the, 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 hype, the, the hype is overwhelming for me. So I could only but imagine how it is for him. <laughs> Lord jumps in here. He says EDP45 is a good representation of Eagle fan. Thank you for the thank you for the super chat. Somebody wanted to come in and troll. There they go. The trolls, man. You know you hit it when you got trolls with your with your logo, man. With Listen, you know you hit it when you got trolls who are willing to donate so they can see you be a troll. <laughs> right. But hey, thank you, man. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Nikki Evans, thank you for super uh, super chat. She says Pitt's hype is because of Waller comparison. Pitts equals bust. She mm -hmm. agrees with you. Nick yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just I, I got a feeling. It's not only Pitts though. It's also Zach Wilson because I have a I, the quarterbacks in this draft five hundred. I already said from the rip. I don't think either. I don't think there's a quarterback in this draft better than Jalen Hurts. I don't see it. I don't believe it. They're going to have to show me all this hype that Zach Wilson is getting for just having one good season out of BYU. He's right. already been anointed. The, the you, you, He's been anointed the second best sure thing in this draft. Come on. I don't believe right. it. When guys like Mac Jones, who was basically getting crapped on, who I think who I think performed way better than Zach Wilson last year. So right, so you, Zach oh, Wilson. Go ahead. Say it again. No, no you look so you like Mac Jones. No, I mean, it's not that I want him to be an eagle. It, right, it's it's right. just that I'm just I'm just trying to find the connection because we've been doing this for a long time now on YouTube, yeah. you and I. So when you do this as long as we've been doing it, you start to see certain trends. Mm -hmm. Why is yeah. Zach Wilson getting this hype? And why mm -hmm. is Mac Jones not getting this hype? Right. How was everybody telling me that the man that threw for the most yards in college football last season, 4,500 yards, the mm -hmm. second most touchdowns is a bum. People are telling yeah. me he's a bum. Hmm. I'm like, how? Yeah. He overthrows people. He underthrows people. Yeah. And tell you me think... what everybody else do. If him overthrowing and underthrowing <laughs> right. means that he's going to lead the whole the nation in passing right. yards and be set. Come on. It don't make sense. Yeah. No, no, I hear you. I hear you. Christian Brown, thank you so much for the super chat. He says, how upset would you be if the Eagles drafted Fields with the first? Let's be real. Hertz is not one stud wide receiver from improving uh, what was done last year. I'd be pretty pissed off if they took Fields. Because I'll to be, me, I, I, yeah, yeah. To me, it's like it's like you got three number ones next year. I mean, let's give this kid one year, and if you don't like him, if you don't plan out, if you don't seem like a franchise quarterback, then go get your franchise quarterback. But I, I mean, to me, I, I I would be shocked if they did that. But, I would have to I, mean, I would have to slightly disagree with that comment though, just a little bit though, because I think Pitts actually probably I, I think. Hertz actually is probably one stud wide receiver away from probably having the Eagles average in about 26 points a game. We were dead mm. in the tracks until he got on the football field. That offense right. was moving when Hertz was in the game. He, they, I, they were moving. The thing is, he's only played four games. I, I can't sit there and say that he's a franchise quarterback. I don't know yet. I like things that I saw, but I need a whole year to see it. Like I need to see what he can do. And and after trading Carson Wentz, after going through everything you went through, you might as well give him the year to find out. You have to. That's how I look at it, you know. Bino, thank you for the super chat, man. He said, Scouts just said Zach Wilson a couple minutes ago. He reminds me of a young Aaron Rodgers. They're setting him up for failure, in my opinion. I agree. Yeah. That, that, I agree. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I agree. Saying Aaron, I like Zach Wilson personally. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, I do disagree in that. I, I I think Zach Wilson's gonna be a star. I, I think I, I, I like I, I like Zach Wilson when he's when he's throwing in shorts without a defense around. Right. Right. The, the <laughs> biggest problem with Zach Wilson, in my opinion, is going to the Jets. The Jets ruin everybody. That's true. They ruin That's everybody. True. That's true. The, you know, a lot of these guys, it, it, it's not that they're not good. A lot of these players come out, they're very talented, it, but it's where you go. It's what coach do you go to? What team do you go to? Do they develop you right? Do they use you right? You know, and and teams like the Jets always screw up quarterbacks. Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel for Lawrence as well because I think Lawrence yeah. is actually actually really good. Yeah, he is. I I I think they're both good. Um, you know, I, I like uh, you know if you get a guy like a Justin Fields, if he goes somewhere with a good coach. I think he has a better shot at all of them of being good. Trey Lance too. I I'm afraid. Of, Go ahead. I'm afraid of Justin Fields going to New England. I'm afraid of that combination. Yeah, that could be deadly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm afraid oh, of that. I, I, there, you know, I always wonder how many players would have been good if they were drafted by somebody else. Yeah. You know, they had the right coaching. I often think of like back in the day with Randall Cunningham, like 
As good as he was, he never had anybody to really teach him. If he had Andy Reid, I don't know how good he could have been. You know, that's true. That's those those true. Are, are the things I think. So sometimes you just don't know. You know, uh, but but Zach Wilson going to the Jets is not a good good thing for him. Aaron Hall, thank you for the super chat, man. He says, "How you feel if we go defense the first two rounds?" The offense class is deeper than the defense, in my opinion. For me personally, as long as it was the best players on the board, I, I don't care. Just just stick with the best players available. You know, be true to your board. Yeah, That's yeah, I, I can't, think. I can't be, I can't be mad at a at a at a Micah Parsons and then uh, Eric Stokes or Asante Samuel Jr. I can't be mad at that being your first two picks. No, I can't either. Uh, okay. Concrete Green, thank you for the super chat. This is a, it's an interesting question. I, I want to hear your take. Philly 500 and LB, would you take an offensive lineman with pick 12? Thank you for the super chat, buddy. Uh, here, here, here's, here, here's my thing. Offensive lineman with pick 12. I won't be as mad as people think we. I probably should be. Because getting the offensive lineman with the pick 12 tells me one, one thing for sure. That you're trying to protect Jalen Hurts. And you're trying to be able to establish the run more. And we right. need those things as well. So I'm not too mad at that. I'm not yeah. too mad at that. Yeah. I, I, honestly, I, I have no problem. If it's Rashawn Slater or, Pe or Penny Sewell, I have no problem. Exactly. If anybody else, I, I mean, I can't get mad at that a, a, at all. You know, if uh, at six, I would say no to Slater. But Penny Sewell, I would have said yes to. But those two guys, I can't get mad at that. Um, defensive line, I would, but not not offensive line. Um, and and my only reason is this: is I just don't think any of the defensive linemen are good enough to go at twelve. I think Slater and those other guys are. So that's why I would do it. You know, that makes sense. I mean, if, look, if 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 Jason Pierre-Paul was coming out, or I'm just throwing his name, or somebody like that. In this draft, as a defensive end, I have no problem with it. But you can't you can't just take a guy because he fills a position or he reminds you of Brandon Graham. I think that's crazy. It is crazy you know? because where, where did Brandon Graham go? He's still there. So you right. want Brandon Graham and a guy that reminds you of right. Brandon Graham? Right. Right. And Brandon Graham, look, people forget when the first half of his career, he was a bust. Yeah. He wasn't that good. He's gotten better as he's gotten older. Most guys are, don't do that. It doesn't yeah. happen, you know. Dilly Philly, thank you for super chat. He says Quez Watkins needs more playing time. Period. To ah, man, I love Quez Watkins. I, agree. I, I agree. we agree, we agree. We got a lot of super chats coming. I'm trying to get through some of these. Ricky <laughs> Grimm, thank you so much for super chat. Do you draft Smith or Parsons if available? I think me and LB are both going to say Smith. Yeah, I'm going to take Smith. Yeah, and then we're going to come back up in the first, and we're going to draft my man JOK. I ain't mad That's at that. My, yeah. Kyle Cap, thank you for the super chat. We say the same thing every year. If Howie messes this up and he does what he did last year and the year before and nothing happens to him. Yeah, look, you were right about that. And I think the big fallout from what he did wrong fell on Doug Peterson. I think Howie is running out of excuses, though. I, I think this is the year he can't he can't mess up anymore. I think I think he has one more excuse. I think the organization has one more excuse. Um, Jalen Hurts. If they don't understand that Jalen Hurts may have a slight learning curve, that 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 that, that truly was a small sample size, and he could still have a few bad games because he is a young player, and they start blaming him right off the back being a young player. I think that you know that would just be terrible. Number one, and I, I think that's a card that we can see Howie Roseman play before he accepts all the blame because Howie Roseman accepts no wrongdoing at all. No wrongdoing at all. Uh, Howie, I've never seen a guy just survive all these shots fired at him man i just i can't believe it we got 692 people here thank you so much for being here please like please subscribe click the link in the description and sub up my man lb if you haven't which if you have i don't yes, know what sir. I'm really doing. appreciate it greatly really appreciate it. it or we're gonna double moonwalk that ass yes sub sir up. and don't forget lb will be streaming tomorrow as well so be sure to show him love support and and somebody win the manscape uh, especially oh, when you yeah. dudes that need it. And some of you guys probably need it. When guys with the matrimonial duties, we're on top of it. Promote I gotta, it. Listen, I got, I got it right here. 500. Win the Manscaped. Your the balls are online. Yes, the Walmart, the Walmart 3.0. Win the Manscaped. Manscaped is giving one away for you guys. Come on and pop in the live stream and win it real quick. Win it. Win it. You, especially if you need it. Yeah. Atticus, thank you for the super chat. 
Virginia Tech offensive lineman Christian Darso and Devontae Smith had a lot of good things to say about Hurts 100. Says a lot about Hurts and our future. I agree, Atticus. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you saw that. Christian Darisol said he would love to block for uh, Jalen Hurts. That would be the one guy he would love to block for. He, and Devontae a, Smith wants to come to Philly. He's a stand-up guy, man. I haven't seen a young guy get this much respect since yeah. uh, Justin Herbert is getting quite, uh, quite a lot of respect. Yep. But Jalen yeah. Hurts only only playing four games, man. That means people respect the story. People respect what he's been through. People respect how he battled after being benched, then coming back to almost win the Heisman. Yep. You know what I mean? People respect him. Yeah, they do. No question about it. No question about it. Trans Fat, thank you for Super Chat. He said, they actually said Wilson has similar playmaking ability to Aaron Rodgers. Didn't call him a young Aaron Rodgers. Thank you for Super Chat. Uh, look, I, I I do think he's got some, some, some uh, you know, flashy ability. I, I do, especially like he seems quick on his feet at times. There's things I like about Zach Wilson. Problem with Zach Wilson is he's going to the Jets. Yeah. That is the problem, you know? Bino, thank you for Super Chat. Maybe this is all a blessing in disguise for Fields. At least he won't go to the Jets. Hey, look, you never know. You never know. <laughs> or Howie Roseman, you never know. Joseph Vega, thank you for Super Chat. The Eagles need to Bogart. We have a lot of picks in 21-22. We need to go hard, get four starters. We get Chase or Pitts. Then move back in the first, get JOK, then Asante Jr. and last Stokes at least three. I agree with that. I agree I, with that. I do too. What I'm saying you need to be aggressive, man. You need you need to you need to put a package together for the first with that first round pick you got from Miami. Slide it up there to um uh who, who wants to come down again? Atlanta. Add yeah. Zach Ertz to it, and you go get a guy. Then you put another first. Then you do something else. Put a couple seconds together. And go yep. get back into the first. You go all or nothing. All or nothing. Um, absolutely. I'm with you, man. Mr. International, my man, says Terrence Marshall be great in Eagles green. I, I, agree. I agree. I I I love Terrence Marshall. No question about it. Um, Let's see. I thought I had one more here. Blade Brown, thank you for the super chat, man. Appreciate it. He says, do you guys actually watch college football or do you just wait until the end of the year and just watch highlight tapes? We all know LB was doesn't watch college football, so if he – so who is he to give draft advice? That's Look, not everybody, true. Everybody, That's not true. I, I don't watch every team. I don't watch a ton of college football. There are teams that I watch. But I do go back and I watch all the players. And I don't just watch the highlight films. I do a reaction video of highlight films, but I watch more than that. Um, this, is what, this is what I do. Since you're confused, you Mr. Chat. Blade Brown, what I do is this. What I do is I watch the major programs because those guys tend to get drafted in the first round a right. lot. Right. I watch the major programs, and, and then I make my evaluations like that. There's nobody walking this earth that's going to tell me that they are watching every college game. It's like three million schools. It's impossible to yeah. watch college football. and yep. say it's, it's impossible to watch college football in its entirety the way you can do the NFL. It's only 30-something teams. Right. So, I mean, eh. Who am I to yep. give draft? Who am I to give draft advice? That's a good question. I did say get DK Metcalf. I did say get Quez Watkins. The yep. list goes on about how I, how my personal evaluations go. Hey, look, I will take I will take over the last three four years. I will take our picks over Howie Roseman's picks any day. Exactly. Week. Any exactly. day. Week. Any exactly. Day. You know you 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 know what. Just check out our draft boards. That's all you got to do. That's it. That's it. Just check out our draft That's boards it. and see who performed Absolutely. and who did what. Iggy Six, thank you so much for the super chat. Philly and LB been watching you all for a while. Keep it all. Much love from Texas. We ain't all dirty Dallas fans. Iggy hey, Six, yo, thank you, you so much, man. man. Shout out to you in Texas. Appreciate that. Trans Fat, thank you so much for Super Chat. Didn't Miles Garrett threaten to go back to school because he didn't want to play for the Browns when there were booty? I don't know if he did. I can't remember, um, I don't remember if, that. if that's true. But, um, I mean, Miles Garrett's a hell of a player, and the Browns have turned it around. So, uh, you know, hey, it is what it is, right? Nikki Emmons, thank you for Super Chat. She says, Darisol is my pick, calling it. It's a done deal. Wow. Mm. So she's saying that that would be surprising at 12. That would it surprise would be surprising me. At 12. You never know. You never know. I mean, offensive line, it's not hard for me to, to get so mad because I think they're a really good offensive lineman, but not like defensive. I can't do the defensive end thing. No way. No way I can do that. Let's see. Rich McCormick, thank you for the super chat. Are you all streaming for 8 p.m. to pass midnight till the last pick in round one? 
Wow, much respect. No, we're not streaming from now till then. Is that what <laughs> you mean? No, but thank you for Super Chat. But we are streaming tomorrow. Um, well, the first round. Well, the first round's like two, three hours. They drag it out. Yeah, it, it'll you know. it'll probably be over like ten o'clock. So you're streaming first. What are you streaming? Uh, what's your plans for draft? I'm going to stream. I'm going to stream from the start of the first round up until the our our pick up until our second pick. Cool. Because cool, after cool. that, I think that's it for us day one, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's, as far as I know, that's it. Yeah. Shizzy two one five. Thank you so much for super chat. Get Waddle. Come back up and grab Sertan. Can't fool around this draft. You'd have to. You'd have to get way. You'd have to give up a lot. Probably all three of those first round picks to to do all that. Yeah, you're, you're talking about come back up to draft Sertan. You're, you're talking about drafting in the top ten twice. Yeah, that 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 is going to be tough. You know what I mean? Lucia says it's hard to believe Ertz is getting traded. I'll believe it when it happens. I think it's. I think it's happening. I think Ertz is going to get traded. Um, they're saying son. they're saying there's six or seven teams interested in him in a in a draft that is weak in a tight end position. So you know what's going to happen? Somebody's going to lose out on one of the few tight ends they want, and they're going to feel the need to trade for. I think he ends up in Indianapolis. That's what I think is going to happen. Mm, I hope he doesn't because I want Carson Wentz to do well, and all Carson Wentz is going to do is target Zach Ertz because that's what he knows. Yeah. Marianne says, Philly and LB, which is the best trade, Ertz and the 12th pick for the 4th pick or Ertz and the 12th pick for the 8th pick? Also, do you guys like Fogelman in 2021? Mm, that's a good one. Yeah. So um, I think it's going to take more than Ertz in the 12th pick to get to 4. I think you're going to have to add something else. I don't think Ertz will just be the deciding factor moving from 12 to 4 uh, or for 12 to 8. I think you got to add another pick to that, but – I would add Ertz a first Ertz a future first round pick and uh, the twelfth pick to get the four. I would do it. So I think that's the better trade because hmm. you get your pick at whoever you want. Absolutely, you get your pick right there. And as far as Fogum goes, if you put Fogum on an outside matching with one of these young guys, they say Rager could be going to the slot. That's the rumor. I like Fogum. I like Fogum in twenty twenty one, big time. Yeah, I like Fogum too at twenty twenty one. I I thought they screwed him up when they took him out. You know, it didn't make any sense to me. But I will say this. I like Fulgham, but I don't. There's no receiver on this team that I trust enough to not take Devontae Smith. You know what I mean? Very like, well. like I'm, 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 I'm still going to take him if he's there. And as far as Ertz and the twelfth pick, I think the Ertz and the twelfth pick to try to get up to eight. So maybe like Ertz a twelfth pick and a third round pick get up to eight and maybe take a Chase or a, a, a Pitts if they were to fall or Devontae Smith. You can take him there too. I think that that's more reasonable. I don't know. That I want to give up that first round pick. But, um, you know, the, the, that's the, kind of my thoughts on it, you know. Dilly Philly, thank you for the super chat. He says, live draft day is going to be lit tomorrow. By the way, shout out to ULB, someone win that Manscaped. Appreciate the good content you put out and work ethic. Appreciate thank, you, man. Thank you. Thank you, I hope, buddy. I hope you win it, buddy. You, Yeah, you might need it. You're going to win the Manscaped. <laughs> You know, they won't they, they they look at this and they, they think they think you I need a lot more help than Mansky, but I let me <laughs> I, I take care of what I gotta take care of. Exactly. You know what I mean, I, I'm all about matrimonial duties. Bird gang griff, thank you for super chat. Lord 500, my best two guys. Thank hey, you. Hey, shout out to you, bro. Appreciate that, man. So LB, what did you think of um with our you know, we, we did the draft board for a yeah. while. Were there any picks that like that you really like love like like that you didn't think about at the time that either you would have loved to put on that draft board that we didn't get a chance to hmm. or just guy on there that you that's on there that you're like man we we need that guy we need I don't guy. think I don't think we put uh Stokes on there from Georgia did we no I would have loved I would have loved to add him he, he's growing on me I, I, th yeah. I think that that's the first round talent that's going to be selected in the second round most likely and I think that dude is a problem yeah, I think that's yeah. a really good cornerback right there. Yeah, yeah, I so think that'll so. be, yeah, that'll be my guy. Okay, I like it. I, I would have liked. I would have liked to put Asante Samuel Jr. on there. I don't think we put him on there, did we? No, I don't we think didn't. He was on there. No. Yeah, he he would have been my. I I really like Asante Samuel Jr. in the second round. I I I think he's a stud. Uh, Joseph Vega, thank you for super chat. LB, if Howie was smart, he would use all first round picks in the second and seconds and keep getting players. We have cap. Cap money in 2022. If the Eagles aren't aggressive, it's their fault. I so agree. He, want, he wants them to trade everything and just get what we need this year. 
That's but can we? But, but can we afford to pay all those guys this year? We got to yeah. also keep that in mind. Right. Right. Exactly. No. No question about that. Shizzy, thank for super chat. He says, "I really feel like Howie, the cornbread scientist, is going to pick the defensive end from Michigan, Quiddy Pay." It's, it's scary. That's what scares me. It does scare me that they don't go defensive line. That is typically what the Eagles do. That's it why my not, brother put ninety dollars on it to win a it might not be. It might not be a table here if that happens. That the, the computer might take a, a a spin around this room if that happens. I'm burning this whole house down. <laughs> the computer I'm might take a, the, the computer might do a tour of this whole room. Yeah, it's going to be bad. I, I'm not going to like that pick at all. I, I think that's such a reach. Now, if they trade back to let's say twenty two and then take them, all right, I'm not going to complain. But yeah. No, nah, dude, no. Nah. Chaos the Filthy, my man. What's up, my guys? Philly 500 and Lord Brunson. Yo, I'm going to be real. If we don't draft defense first pick, I'm going to be upset. I see a lot of good wide receivers this draft. We can't wait. We can wait. Now, let me ask you this, Chaos. Let's say you have Devontae Smith, and he's rated higher than J.C. Horn. A lot higher. You're going to tell me you're going to take J.C. Horn over Devontae Smith because you want a corner? See, that's my whole thing. If we were going to win a Super Bowl next year and you need that need, I get it. But when you have so many holes, you just got to go, in my opinion, the best guy. Yeah, you know? I agree. That, that, that's what I think. You know, I, I just feel like we don't – we can't afford it, you know. It's crazy. It's crazy. And we got 673 people here. Please like. Please subscribe. Make sure you click the link in the description and sub up my man LB if you haven't. Greatly appreciate it. Yes. Live direct. Thank you for the super chat. He says, if we don't move up for ch Pitts or Chase, my three rounds equal round one, number 12, J.C. Horn over Sertan. Round two, Nick Bolton or Zavin Collins. I love that. Round three, number 70, Creed Humphrey. Round three, number 84, Joe Tryon. I don't know a lot about Creed Humphrey or Tryon, so I can't I can't comment on those guys. But I love the Bolton and Zavian Collins pick at, at, at um, 37. I also I, – I have Horn as my number one corner. So I would not be upset with that at all, you know, at all. Uh, not bad. Not bad at all. Joseph Vega, thank you for the super chat. LB, can we – we can trade Ertz and restructure someone. He, J, Joseph Vega is ready. He's ready to trade the whole house. Yeah, he, he is. He is. <laughs> he is. I'm not, he is. I'm not mad at him, man. That's Before awesome. we get out of here, what time are you starting tomorrow, uh, 500? Probably, probably about um, what, what was the draft? Eight o'clock. So probably yeah. like seven forty-five. Probably fifteen minutes before, ten minutes before him. We're gonna do like we'll do like another couple minutes here. Close it up. Um, LB man, thank you so much for coming on. I once again man, had it always, man. Always. I had a I had a great great uh time with you doing the draft board as always. Yeah, can't wait to do it next year. And, and I mean, I hope I hope we I hope we get something good this year. You know. Listen, listen, listen. I think this is the year. I'm telling you, I feel really good about this year. I feel really good about this year. I do too. I, I have a weird feeling like everything's going to be okay. You know, that, that things are going to be just a little different. And I'm going to give Nick Sirianni, I'm going to give him all the credit for it, you know. Lakers sign Chris Harris says, love you guys so much. Love you too, buddy. Love you too, Thank my you. man. Yeah, Thad says, Quiddy Pay or Patrick Sertan for me. Now, you want Quiddy Pay or – or you just think that's what they're going to do? I don't. I don't want Quiddy Pay. I really don't. Honestly, I, honestly, I haven't seen what they seem to say. We're so in love with him now. His tape is very impressive. I'm, right. not, I'm not going to lie. The tape is very impressive, but the stats aren't there. Right. The, you you yeah. know, I, he doesn't have like a 10 sack season in college. The stats just not there for me. Yeah. No, I hear you, Timothy Looper, my man. Hello, Philly, from old Cowboy fan from Terrell Tech. Timothy is a good guy. Timothy, shout out to you, man. Shizzy. 215, thank you for the super chat. Lord, I hear you. I might run through the door myself. I already did the measurements on through the door. <laughs> He's already ready to go buy a new door. I, I'm telling you, if they draft Quiddy Pay, I'm going to be pissed, man. And I'll, I'll try to have your stream on when I'm streaming. I might even be texting you during it. Yeah, yeah, can, I, yeah, you know? yeah. I'll definitely have your stream on. I got another monitor and, in here, and, so and I'm going to try to dual stream. Yeah. Make sure you guys sub up Lord Brunson. Make sure you go 
Check out his channel when he's live streaming this draft. It's going to be awesome tomorrow. He's giving away prizes. He's got guests. He's got all sorts of shit going on. Yes, sir. It's going to be a lot of fun. So It's going to be a movie, as always. And listen, nobody okay. does draft day like Eagles content creators. It's just no. nobody. If, if no. you see somebody, if you see Eagles fans streaming a draft, just pop in there and check it out, man. Absolutely. Everybody's going to do a good job. Absolutely. Joseph Vega, thank you so much for Super Chat. When's the last time we had this many picks? Let's go. It's been Great. a while. It's been a while, no doubt about it. And listen, let me thank each and every one of you guys for joining, um, you know, for subscribing, super chats, likes, all the comments. I'm sorry that we missed so many. They were going really, really quick. We had at one point over 700 people in here. So thank you all so much. Um, we appreciate it. And hey, look, tomorrow it's time. It's go time tomorrow. So with that said, everybody, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you to LB for coming on once again. Oh, we got bro. one more super. We got a late super chat coming in here. Paul two one five. Thank you for the super chat. Five hundred. Quiddy Pay will have sixteen sacks with our Eagles this year. He has sixteen sacks. The Eagles rookie year, dude. I'll buy you. I'll buy you a, a Quiddy Pay jersey. How about that? But I don't. I don't. I, I'm. I'm thinking more of instead of sixteen, it's one point six. It would exactly. be one point six, not sixteen. But we'll see. We'll see. But anyways, guys, thank you so much. LB, thank you for joining. With that said, we are going to let you guys go. Take care. We will talk to you later. And, of course, don't be a dingbat. Peace.